Okay, so I just want to have a conversation with the chosen ones and just talk about the path of walking with God and what you're going to experience. It can be a difficult path. And the reason being is because when God gives you truth, you tap into the truth. When God grants you with wisdom, you, know, you see through everything. People say there is suffering in wisdom. And it's true because sometimes you just know too much more than you should. It's very uncomfortable. You see right through people. You have spiritual discernment. You see their true intentions. You see their true colors. You see see their motives. You see that they only want to be around you if there's something to gain or they only join when things are popping off or they come around to steal, kill, and destroy when this... Like, you literally see everything under the sun for what it is. Nothing is camouflaged. And you see what the enemy has done, who he's using. And usually the enemy will use the people closest, right? Because if you are in a place where you're surrounded by people who are unsaved, who cannot protect their vessels, pray against their vessels, war in the spirit, or protect themselves spiritually the enemy will use those people to stab you in the heart to betray you to do the dirtiest most vile disgusting things imaginable and to them they just play it off like it's not a big deal because god says people's hearts in the end time will wax cold and we are getting more pure to where we experience god's real pure love and you realize the love on earth is not real none of it's real even the people closest to you none of it's real and there's just a lot of things that open your eyes we can feel a lot of different things you you could feel like people are working against you even the people closest to you and it's because they truly are and i'm going to give you a couple scriptures why that's happening why this spiritual phenomenon is coming against you why you go through these spiritual things that feel like it's opposing you at times when you're about to get a breakthrough why it feels like spiritual forces are working against you and it's because they are you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world obeying the devil a lot of people are obeying the devil and when you obey the devil unknowingly, unconsciously, when you're not spiritually guarded in prayer or aware or you're spiritually asleep, you are obeying the devil. And if you're working with God, you will see the people closest chosen, the people who are made to strengthen and love you, trying to oppose, trying to interject, trying to cut you down, trying to make you stumble. And that's why with wisdom, when that mask is unveiled, there could be great suffering. And some things really do hurt, but you can't focus on that. You got to focus on God because your father truly loves you. He truly loves you. He truly cares for you. Real genuine love that you have never felt before. And a lot of people who aren't saved, they are obeying the devil. The commander of the powers of the unseen world. So, you know, all the agendas, all the things these companies promote in Hollywood, the movies, LGBTQT, the things on TV, the programming, the music is all influenced from the demonic realm, the unseen world by the commander of the powers of the unseen world which is satan there was demonic entities there's demonic influences in the unseen world god said there is spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms there was three realms in heaven there was god's throne which is love peace joy positivity a future a hope all of those things then there's the second which is doubt anxiety fear living in the flesh living in your senses that is the second realm that is the unseen world and there's demonic influences is there and if you're not spiritually guarded prayed up fasting in the blood of jesus you could easily be used by the devil for his will that's why it feels like everybody's against you like everybody's snaking you everybody's doing you wrong and it's because that's who they worship unknowingly that's who they work for unknowingly they are legitimately satan's agents he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey god now what does that look like you have hope you have spark you have vision and there's always that person who wants to spread doubt, who wants to add water to that flame, who wants to cast a shadow over that light. You have solutions and they have more problems. You start elevating and doing better in life, they become more hyper competitive and try to sabotage. And it's unfortunate when you grow up around these things, when you were unguarded, unprotected. That's why it's important that you have a God fearing family so everybody can become their maximum self without any spirits who are in the kingdom of darkness constantly casting a shadow constantly dimming the light constantly trying to bring people into a cave-like mentality where it's all dark it's all wicked it's all caged and it's all arms tied behind your back no hope no future no light and it comes in many forms like when you start doing good when you start doing amazing they will be more abusive they will be more argumentative they will be more in your face and that's what it looks like scripture number two in which you 
used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, which is Satan, the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient. So, you know, when it comes to generational curses, when you are overcoming things, when you're bringing light to situations, there's always somebody in the background who is taking that band-aid off, who's trying to make the situation worse, who's rebelling even further. You know, you bring up God and then they'll get like some hell bracelets or we're all going to hell t-shirts. That's what it looks like. The sons of disobedience. You are progressing, trying to bring a vision, trying to bring some light, trying to bring some hope, and they are dampening that. That's why you need to protect your families and you need to have discernment for the relationships that you get into. Who's going to be raising your children because you don't want your children harassed, tormented, or constantly in a battle or in a combative state just so they could be the fullest versions of themselves. That is a generational curse. When you grow up and you're in a combative state, focused on other issues, other problems, instead of focused on who God made you to be. This is why you need discernment. You need to protect your family, guard your family, be watchful, be weary of the people you get into a relationship with, who you build with, because it doesn't just affect you. But this is why you feel like there's so many people against you because these people are walking with Satan. They're walking with the devil. That's why they live a resistance-free life, frictionless lives, because they're working in Satan's will. And Satan is a lion looking for whom he may devour. They are already devoured. There's no treasure. There's nothing for Satan to attack spiritually, mentally, or whatever, because they're not a threat. They are keeping the peace when it comes to Satan walking with him. They are doing Satan's will. They're addicted to going out and drinking, doing drugs, going and partying, being prideful, being boastful, being disrespectful, being slanderous, tearing people down instead of raising them up. They're doing Satan's will. So of course, they're going to live a frictionless life. That's why when you walk with God and you start exposing what's behind the scenes, who has been masquerading as an angel of light, hiding behind the physical. You know, a lot of us think our problems are flesh and blood and physical, but really it's just a spirit behind the scenes, Satan. And when you start exposing that, there's a clash between good and evil. Now you're clashing because you're on the opposite side of the spectrum. But what are the weirdest things that happen while you are on set that really confirm that when you're confronting and exposing the demonic, it is real? The demonic resistance, by the way, to this film being allowed to be shown has been off the charts. I mean, we've had our roof in Burbank, California, rip off. Mm. Literally a whole roof I'm not of the talking building. the asphalt shingles. I'm talking about the, the roof. roof. It was during the torrential rainstorms out here, and that was the only building that that happened to. It's I mean, we had eight car destroyed. crashes in 11 days when we were shooting. No one got hurt, but all the cars were totaled. I mean, come on. While we're shooting the scenes where we're talking and revealing the devil, the building's girders are groaning from wind. And the bottom line is we stop shooting about the, we stop shooting. Uh, we get to the part where we're not talking about the devil, totally silent. We wind disappears. We've been told Go back to shooting about the devil, it comes again. We had a priest, we had a ministry team on set. The priest's appendix explodes. Wow. Okay, Appreciate we're talking you. about many of the major players that were involved with us. Steve Dace was in the hospital, almost died from a mysterious infection. The night before our Everybody release. came to pray over him and wow. suddenly you. Our, I mean, it's tip of the iceberg. marketing chief on the way home, and it's this critical time the, on the way flight home from the premiere was earburn drum perforated. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Wow. Obviously, if you agitate the devil, if you go to war against the devil, he fights back. He doesn't want to be revealed. And I'm telling you, your audience should not be scared. They should be excited. This is bullets for your gun as a Christian. You're breaking generational curses. You're overcoming sins. You're escaping low vibrational frequencies, thoughts, and ways of being that suppress and hold down and chain and destroy. That's what Satan's job is. To steal, kill, destroy. In the moment you're on the opposite side of the fence, well, now you're battling. You're clashing. You're prayed up. You're warring in the spirit. You're all about it. And there's a clash. Because Satan just wants to be behind the scenes like I don't exist I'm not here while he's causing all these issues but yeah this is why it's very important that you get your family saved why you have to pray for your family you have to pray for the people who cannot protect their vessels who cannot protect themselves in the spirit who are spiritually asleep because the enemy will go after people like that torment people like that keep them in negative loops negative cycles keep them in bondage keep them in chain and so when you come on the forefront meant to break all of these things, meant to destroy all of these things, they will try to oppose you. So it's just a big mess. And I just want to show you how Satan is behind the scenes, pretending like he doesn't exist, influencing this world, and why this world is so broken, condemned, shattered, destroyed, and why people are more condemned, shattered, broken, 
destroyed. It all started with Adam and Eve when Eve bit that apple and sin entered the world. Just look at the back of your iPhone. And this is when the curse of diseases, plagues, expelling energy into work that never pays out, being depressed, anxiety, demons, being tormented, being attacked, suicide. That's when the curse was entered into the world. That is not what God planned at all. But I just want to show you how Satan is influencing beings behind the scene and why you are feeling friction, why you are feeling resistance, chosen one, because you were meant to break all of these curses. You were meant to break these generational curses, break these false concepts, break these false ideas, break these people in your bloodline who are hindering, stalling, destroying minds, keeping people in bondage and all of these things. That's why people dislike you because people are comfortable in their brokenness. People are comfortable living in these generational cycles of being in bondage, being in chains. They're comfortable in the lie instead of coming to the truth and being the fullest expression of themselves. And you will start to realize that Satan opposes everything in the Bible. Everything in the Bible, this world is the complete opposite. That's why God says, if you are a friend of this world, you are an enemy to God because this world is the complete opposite. Now that doesn't mean hate this world and hate everybody in it. No, you love the people, you love your neighbor and you love righteousness and you hate wickedness and you hate the systems of the world and you hate the direction of where the world's going and what it's promoting but you love what god's promoting and what god's about we are in the world but not of the world but anyways here is how satan is behind the scenes influencing everything and distorting the bible so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them this one is pretty obvious and you would think this is like impossible for satan to corrupt or to confuse but nope satan's like no i'm gonna create man and woman in my image baphomet satan is a trans satan's like no i'm gonna create a man in my image god is not the author of confusion what does satan do confuses the identities now we have 300 genders now they're in unisex bathrooms satan blurs the lines and confuses their identities making man woman and woman man by the way sodom and gomorrah was destroyed because the men of sodom had tried to engage in homosexual intercourse the city was destroyed for inhospitable treatment of visitors sent from the Lord. What do we see in nowadays? Well, Christians are persecuted, people sent by the Lord. This is just all repeating, is it not? It's right here in the Bible, bro. She asked me to read it. She asked me. So that's just one of the ways that Satan influences these vessels. God says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. So Satan puts a liquor store on every street corner. And every Saturday, every Friday, we're going out and we're being a drunkard. God says, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in their heart. God says flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body. Well, whoever sins sexually, sins against their own bodies. So what does Satan do? He normalizes OnlyFans. Girls being half-dressed on social media. Makes Cornhub free so you can commit adultery in a split second. Satan normalizes sins and makes it accessible as possible to make you ensnared and as rebellious as possible. He normalizes sins. So it's the cool thing to do. So if you are set apart and you don't do them, you're the odd ball out. Makes you the castaway. It makes you the weird one and that's how satan wants to operate that's why broad is the path to destruction now woman could say well men shouldn't be you know antagonizing this or men shouldn't be promoting this looking at this yeah two wrongs don't make a right man should not be feeding into this but woman should not be promoting this because god has standards for woman as well as men we're not supposed to lust women are supposed to dress morally but satan has completely tainted that entire thing as well god says marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. So what does Satan do? He skyrockets the divorce rates. 
It seems like everybody is just going through divorces nowadays. People see it as a bad business transaction. Oh, that's a bad business move. Why would I get married? She's gonna take half. I can't trust her. Well, you could trust her if you were following God and it was a God-ordained spouse, a kingdom spouse. And if you had discernment and if you brought the right person in, a gift from God is a prudent wife. Many people aren't getting that gift from God because they're of the world. That's why divorces are so high. And people have been influenced and trained to leave a relationship as soon as an issue arises. Oh, there's a problem? Well, I could just leave out the back door and find somebody else who's going to treat me better. Oh, there's something that's in the way? Let's not resolve this. I could just go and leave. I could just go out the back door. Like, that is the dominant mindset in a lot of people nowadays. And God says, when a man and woman come together, get married, they become one flesh, one person, one soul. What that person has inside of their spirit, inside of their soul, you now have that inside of your spirit and your soul. You are creating a soul tie and you guys are webbed together. And nowadays, people have multiple different partners. They are becoming one flesh with multiple different people. You are creating soul ties with many different people. Whatever demons, whatever issues, whatever problems that person is dealing with, you are now picking up. So if you're with an unclean person, a spirit that is not from God, you are picking up all their issues, all their burdens, all their beliefs, all their problems. And now you have multiple different partners where you're picking up all of these different things. For God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Well, Satan has an app for that, so you can just download it on your phone anytime you feel a body urge or a temptation. You have instant access to a partner to where that is instantly available. You see how Satan is normalizing everything and making it as accessible as possible, so it's super easy to be ensnared, and that's what Satan wants. Everything in the Bible it says not to do, Satan makes it so it's extremely accessible and normalized. God says, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, sexual activity outside of marriage, Satan has apps for that, nor idolaters, Satan makes sure we worship everything besides Jesus Christ, am I right? Whether it's celebs, money, Buddha, statues, Muhammad, crystals, new age beliefs, fallen angels, characters, influencers, ourselves, social media. People idolize so many different things besides God. Nor men who have sex with men. And that's what it says in the scriptures. I know nowadays Satan wants things to be so normalized and so defended to where it's like repulsive when you speak about the Bible. That's how he wants the world to be. To where you try to heal people, you try to fix people, you try to bring them away from sin. But they go to the Bible and it's so opposite from the world. That's what Satan wants. He wants you so separated and so far from God to when you hear God, it's like, oh, that guy's a bigot. That is why this generation is so fallen and it's becoming more and more and more broken and destroyed as time progresses, more confused, not knowing identities, more cursed, more condemned because it's straying further and further and further and further away from the truth and God and it's becoming more and more and more destroyed. That's why you need to tell the truth of the Bible or else their blood is on your hands. It's just like saying, well, yes, the sexually immoral will enter the heaven, yes, just to be agreeable, but it's not true. It's a lie, and that person's blood is on your hands if they fall for that. If they don't know the truth, and they're like, oh, well, I could be sexually immoral because this guy told me so. No, you have lied to them, so you got to tell the truth of the gospel. Nor men who have sex with men. That's not how God created us. Obviously not. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. Nor thieves. Satan has increased lawlessness. We see people nowadays robbing in broad day normalized and the cops just keep their hand off have you noticed that the cops are like nonchalant they don't really care about anything they have their hands off they're kind of just pacing around not really enforcing the law like they should yeah you're gonna see increased lawlessness nor the greedy people love money nowadays more than their own well-being or kids everything is about being a millionaire social media ferraris cars all these flashy things going to the Dubai because it's flashy, it's beautiful, it's the city of the future. Yeah, be careful because Satan masquerades as an angel of light. It all looks pretty, it all looks flashy, but behind the scenes, the devil is there. You know, whether it's Dubai, it all looks beautiful, a beautiful desert city, skyscrapers, all of these things, but behind the scenes, IG models are doing the most craziest, grotesque things and there's sex trafficking, Lord knows what else, nor slanderers. That's like the normalized thing nowadays. People just talk behind people's back. 
They'll bring up their names in conversations, make things up to destroy their identity. They don't really care. They just want to give you a bad image. God says virginity is saved for marriage, but this world pressures you to lose your virginity. And they celebrate when you lose your virginity. It's like a ticking clock. Oh, when is he going to lose his virginity? When is he going to lose his virginity? We're waiting. You see how the world celebrates everything God despises? The Ten Commandments. Ye shall have no other gods before me. It's like everybody has chosen every god besides Jesus, or Satan has influenced them to, and is going to continue to do so. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven images. Well, people have graven images of Mary and candles. They have statues and fallen angels and idols and all of these things that they worship. Now, I'm not really sure if that means no graven images of Christ himself, like not having pictures of Christ in your home. I'm not really sure. You guys have to explain that in the comments but thou shall not take the name of the lord thy god in vain well satan has made that normalized as well seems like everybody is cursing god in their speech or saying something about that in their speech does it not number four remember the sabbath day and keep it holy on saturday what are people doing they're not keeping the sabbath day holy instead they party they drink are sexually immoral they do all of those grotesque things satan at work once again honor your father and mother the family system and the family Family dynamics. Satan is really interfering with that as well to where a lot of people are growing up with messed up families who were never really loving them or supporting them or sticking up for them or they would choose somebody who is disrespecting them or harassing them or tormenting them or they'll choose money over their own kids or they won't protect or give their kids valuable information or instill discipline or instruction or lead them in the right ways or they'll just hand their kids over to the system. Like Satan wants to make sure that the parental figures are not what they should be so the kids grow up resenting their parents being disobedient so he's really attacking the fathers and the mothers right you see a lot of fathers walking out on their children you see a lot of single mothers who are getting abortions like you just see crazy things to where you know honor your father and mother satan is trying to make that difficult as well unsaved parents who are just infested with the enemy being disrespectful to their own kids number six thou shall not kill now two years ago this was like obvious like yeah god of course we're never gonna do that like you don't really have to put that on paper but nowadays rappers are continually programming this time and time again or whether it's with the news or the media or the games gta halo that's all it's about is about shooting is about killing constant programming rappers only talk about drugs killing and immoral acts and many rappers came out saying they get paid to do so they get paid to talk about more ignorant stuff that we get paid to rap about that stuff they actually pay us more when we rap about more more ignorant stuff so i make sure i even align and come talk on stages like this but you guys double acp open up doors woke up one morning i was like damn they got me man look at the f i spoke about look at the f i put in these people ears man i feel very wrong about a lot of things how many lives i actually am responsible for when it comes to my meals how many kids and people have gotten a car or put this shit in their ears it actually hurts me. Why is that? Because it's an agenda. And that's honestly what I believe the Illuminati is. But what I believe the Illuminati is, is just a demonic agenda to rebel against God, to bring as many people to hell as possible. That's truly what I believe the Illuminati is. And even if Illuminati doesn't exist, there is that agenda and that influence to make as many people go with Satan to hell because he doesn't want to go alone. That's why broad is the path to destruction. Straight and narrow is the path to salvation and few find. It. Number nine, thou shall not bear false witness. Now, there was a time when every female would say that a man raped her, would say that a man sexually assaulted her because she regretted it or because she was in the wrong relationship or because she didn't like the person and she felt guilty, whatever. So she would just sum it up with a lie and try to destroy that man's identity and attack that man's identity. Thou shall not bear false witness. There was a time when that was very prevalent with Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, and now now to the people who actually went through situations like that that's where the whole thing is just disgusting but the truth will always prevail everything that is real everything that is truthful will stand the test of time and it will be uncovered by the lord and every lie god will make sure that's exposed as well every dark act god will make sure that's exposed as well number 10 you shall not covet now this is like a normalized thing as well the devil has everybody comparing and comparing 
competing. Oh, well, my neighbor has this. Well, I got to get something better than my neighbor. My neighbor has this size box. Well, I got to get a bigger size box. You are literally told to be hyper competitive and to compare against your competitors and all of these disgusting things. God says those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This world, Satan, has people operating purely through their flesh and not their spirit. People are only existing in the fleshly realm. They are giving in to desires. They are giving in to temptations. They are giving in to urges and they are operating only in their flesh and not their spirit. Your fleshly senses is where Satan dwells. And the reason for that is because God says, worship me in spirit and in truth. When you are worshiping God in spirit and in truth, following his commandments and praying to God with your spirit, not your flesh, you are reaching the third heaven, God's throne, where there's peace, where there's joy, where there's love, where there's prosperity, where there's good mindsets and all of these things. But when you're in the fleshly realm, God is not there. That is where Satan is. That is where there is fear, there's anxiety, there's doubt, there's all of these disturbing emotions in the second heavenly realm. That's why God says there's spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms. There's three stages in the heavenly realms. You're gonna have to do more research on that if you wanna learn more about that. I just watched a brief video about that. That's why God says to set your mind on heavenly things, which is the third heaven where God sits on his throne and not earthly things in the second heaven. Flesh, senses, what you see, sight, not faith. It's a completely different realm and that's where Satan dwells in temptations, in urges, in lust, in desires, in flesh. And it's crazy. Because even Doja Cat, she was performing a concert wearing a flesh suit. Like, everything is an agenda to rebel against God. Like, down to the T. Literally, everything is an agenda. God says, For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. The spirit and the flesh are waging war against one another, and Satan wants you to wage war against yourself. This scripture describes this whole world. Now, the works of the flesh are evidence sexual immorality, witchcraft, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that sounds like the entire world, and the world has everybody living in their flesh. They want you in your fleshly senses. So Satan makes sure 99 9.9% of people are living in their flesh and not their spirit. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. This is why people are so double-minded, battling themselves, and just in a contradictive state where they're moving in one direction but getting pulled in another. It's because they're giving into their flesh and giving into their spirit. Their spirit wants one thing, but their flesh wants something entirely different. And Satan knows this. So we make sure that people continually live in their flesh. Gluttony, lust, temptations, desires. It's all about the flashiness, giving into that side of the world. So you're stuck in bondage and waging war against yourself. God says, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it will be better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and cast it to the bottom of the sea. So what does Satan do? He starts to target the youth, starts corrupting the youth. That's why there is an attack on the youth right now. That's why LGBTQT is coming in with drag queens trying to make the little ones sin, trying to turn them gay, trying to confuse their identities, trying to say the man is a girl, trying to say the girl is a boy, trying to confuse, trying to make them sin because Satan has no limitation. He has no boundaries and he masquerades as an angel of light. So it's all in the name of love, but really it's more wicked than you could possibly believe. He just uses love to get in there. So on the exterior, it seems all good. So people will defend it. So people will support it. So people will fight tooth and nail to keep it around. But really you unveil it. And now it's pedos who want to be normalized for loving children. And that's a new movement. It's naked men on the street. It's people cutting their genitals. Men becoming women, women becoming men. And this is what's going on behind the name of love. Identity crisis. People being riddled with anxiety, depression. Like look at an LGBT 
QT parade and these people just look shattered they look miserable and they look so lost because they are so far away from God and these people really need love really need real love and saving and I know that because when I wasn't with God I was shattered I was broken and it's because you're away from your source and you're sinning you're condemning yourself you're cursing yourself you are facing afflictions you are facing destruction because that's what happens when you're not in the love of God but yeah Satan masquerades as an angel of light it's fake love demonic agendas using spiritually asleep vessels to carry it out a lot of people are spiritually asleep they want to stand for something they want to be a part of a movement due to a loss of purpose because they are walking with the enemy they don't know what their purpose is so they just want to be a part of a movement right so they'll be a part of Satan's movement Satan is a counterfeit Satan has counterfeits whether it comes to the chick you're supposed to marry Satan will send a counterfeit when it comes to your purpose Satan will send a counterfeit when it comes to certain people you're supposed to be around Satan will send a counterfeit Satan has a counterfeit for everything love Satan's counterfeit is lust God has hope Satan's counterfeit is despair God heals Satan's counterfeit is disease Satan has a counterfeit for absolutely everything and people are influenced by Satan in the kingdom of darkness without realizing it. God says we don't battle against flesh and blood so it's not the physical vessel we don't battle the person but we battle the demonic spirits controlling them and there's demonic spirits that are controlling the governments that are in your family that are in your friend groups we battle against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms what i was talking about and this world is under the control of the evil one satan has influence a lot of influence and it's because we have free will we're not just chained to god's commandments or that would just make us a slave to god god wants you to have the choice to choose him because that really shows you love him if he just forced you to love him force you to obey him that's not a loving god but when he's silently knocking when you choose his will instead of your will when you choose his commandments instead of your commandments that shows that you love him and that's true love and that's showing god that you chose him but satan has a huge influence it says satan is the ruler of this world and will lead the whole world astray so he has a lot of influence but god is still sovereign meaning satan is under god's laws non-negotiable we have the power to walk on serpents to walk on snakes we have dominion we are kings these are low frequency low vibrational beings that are operating without the power of god it doesn't mean you're better than them it means you should be reeling in with your rod to save people because they're gonna be more and more and more led astray but anyway satan is roaming around like a lion seeking whom he may devour so you know satan is there satan is on attack he doesn't take a day off he doesn't rest he's in the spiritual realm he's in the physical realm using vessels he's in the media he's in the principalities in the powers he's legitimately everywhere so the spiritually asleep the spiritually weak who get their mindsets from fake news media and tv or from the world they pick up their beliefs from the world or their neighbor instead of god will be pawns and vessels used by the devil in multiple different ways there's thousands of ways the enemy has been here for two thousand years and if you are spiritually asleep listen this is why we do the praying this is why we cover everybody in prayer um if you aren't swimming upstream in these times you will be pulled away the spiritual pull the demonic pull is a lot if you aren't rooted in god if you ain't rooted in scripture that's why you're gonna see things get more progressively evil as time progresses that's why you will start to see that spiritual pull take place because the influence of the dark is gonna capture all of the spiritually asleep without them even realizing it they're gonna be influenced by the programming they're gonna be influenced by the spirits they will be unguarded vessels not covered in the blood of jesus not warring in the spirit not praying which means they're giving access to unclean impure spirits that will be roaming around the earth we see demonic possessions demonic attacks being delivered from demons time and time again in the bible and these people who are unguarded not with god will be vessels inhabiting those spirits and it's all around so stay prayed up for your family because as this world decays strays further away from god into more sin it's becoming more demonic more fallen more cursed more condemned this is why you got to pray for your family because the intrusive thoughts are going to become more the suicidal tendencies thoughts are going to become more the demons that are plaguing families people whatever are going to become more stronger the spiritual pull so this is why you really have to stay prayed up fast take this stuff seriously pray for your loved ones
ones. But yes, anyways, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, meaning there is progression. Satan is having more and more influence on the ones who are unsaved, on the ones who are not prayed up, on the ones who are not with Jesus. That spiritual pull is going to get more and more and more. That's why when you are a chosen one, you will see a lot of things that break your heart because you're becoming more and more pure. But these people are becoming more and more broken and you will see people close to you trade up just for money, turn their backs, wax cold of love. You will see parents leaving children, choosing money, choosing their own self pleasures or whatever. Like things will become pretty sad, but people will be lovers of themselves in the last days. Satan calls it self-love, self-care, pampering yourself. Just have a day for yourself. Lovers of self, lovers of money. Satan flashes money, wealth, and that dream life continually. Instagram accounts, rich millionaires, manifestation for money, prosperity gospel. It's all about acquiring money. Like that is going to better your life. You cannot take the U-Haul truck to the grave. You can't take that money with you. False sense of security. Boastful. Everybody feels the need to show their better or to boast their worldly competitions. They have their chest stuck out. They always got something to prove they're better than the next man. They stomp and crush and that's how they navigate life thinking that they're not going to have to give an account to God. Proud? We literally have pride month every single month. Pride is what got Satan casted out of heaven and the rainbow flag they used was the covenant between God and Abraham. It was a promise that he would never destroy the world with water again. In LGBTQT, they have six colors that mock God's rainbow. That's why God's people need to take the rainbow back because that belongs to God. So they are mocking God and his promise and his covenant that he would never destroy the world with water again while they're doing all these immoral sins and acts. And these people don't even realize what's going on. They're just being influenced by Satan to rebel against God to their own destruction. Abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. So you're seeing how Satan, a lot of this stuff has already taken place and it is coming true and we can just see how Satan is influencing man, how he is influencing this world into its own destruction. Broad is the path to destruction for a reason. And here's another scripture. Fathers, do not provoke your children or they will become discouraged. Now fathers in this generation, they will just straight up leave their kids or they will torment. They will harass their kids and the mothers will put up with it. They will constantly bombard, talk down to their children. Like you see how Satan has infiltrated this world and everything God says not to do. Satan normalizes it and makes it a part of our society. More cursed, more shattered, more broken as times progress. And it's even getting more wicked with abortions. You know, it talks about people who would sacrifice babies in the Bible to a God. Now that is just modernized. And I mean, people operating in these demonic spirits, these unclean spirits being influenced by Satan are now getting abortions. You know how many abortions there are in the States? Now with these demonic influences in these people, these impure, unclean spirits inside of these people, they are probably aborting God's children. Like just imagine the influence. Oh yeah, we should abort this kid. That kid is probably going to be a blessing. That kid is probably going to break generational curses and the demons inside of these people are like, we should abort that kid. Why do you feel the need to abort that kid? Why does that come to your mind? What influence is that? What is that inside of you to murder your own child? Seriously, to murder your own child. But yeah, chosen, this is why you have been called out of this world. The things that are normalized are from Satan. The things they defend are from Satan and they don't even realize it. And that's exactly why God has called us out of this world to God. Now that just doesn't mean we have grudges, we despise this world, we have spite inside of our hearts and we hate the people. That's not it. God says, love your neighbor, love the people. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We have forgiveness, we have love, we have all of these things, but we hate the beliefs. We hate the world systems. We hate the world's rulers. We hate unrighteousness. We hate wickedness. We hate all these things. Now, obviously not actual hate, but for our own lives, it's not something we're going to partake in. But yeah, that's just how Satan is influencing the world is deeper than you think. Everything in the Bible, this world is the opposite. And it's actually insane. You know, that's why this world has so many issues. 
people grow up with so many problems is because they're living so far away from God. They're living in so many generational curses, so many sins, so many problems, so many issues. And for chosen ones, we have to overcome and we have to battle and we have to deal with all these things. And it's just what it is. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on God's time this time so I don't have to watch. Because his time is already set like Apple Watch. Floating on this beat, I feel like astronauts. But when them demons floating around me, he go cast them up. This is not religion, I don't fall in that trap. Hope you receiving what I'm sending, what's your cash app? Whoever think my past to find me, that is cap, cap. He put all my sins behind me like a tramp stamp. I feel like these preachers trying to sell me something.